I know it sounds like kind of a bold claim. Salt will make you smarter. I mean, it's not going to change your IQ, but it can certainly change your brain energetics. But it's not just salt alone. You see, it has to do with how salt helps what's called GAA, which we'll talk about in a second, and also helps creatine get into the brain. I'm not sure if you knew this, but creatine doesn't always just get into the brain. It requires a particular transporter. So we'll talk about how this works. And really the gist of this video is how to get more creatine into your brain so that you can get the effects of it because it's pretty wild. And we'll talk about all the different bodies of the literature. For the creatine that I use, I put a link down below. It's called Create and I use their creatine stick packs. It's mainly just because I'm on the go all the time and I just can't have a big tub and I like to just have a single serving, but I usually put it in my water and sip on it throughout the day. It's pretty neat that you find when you sort of low dose your creatine throughout the day, it makes the water retention a little bit less. But I also have an interesting thing I'm going to talk about in this video with GAA and potentially even sodium that can help decrease the water retention that you might get with creatine. Because once you start learning how to use it in the brain better, it is a game changer. So anyway, this is a clean, pure form of creatine using a patented Crea Pure version. And we've tested it in third party and it's good quality, legit stuff that backs up what they say they have in it. So that link is for 50% off, 50% off in that top line of the description. So let's go to a study published in the archives of biochemistry and biophysics. What this study found is that there is a particular transporter and it's appropriately named the sodium chloride dependent creatine transporter. This transporter helps creatine get into the brain, but just as the name implies, it's sodium chloride dependent. So creatine doesn't necessarily get into the brain as much as we think it does. It certainly helps, but there is a blood brain barrier that actually blocks some of the creatine absorption. And there's some theories surrounding creatine anyway. People that are potentially non-responders in muscle actually get more out of creatine in the brain. No, maybe we don't have the evidence to back that up, but it makes a lot of sense. Anyway, what this study found is that when sodium chloride levels were elevated along with creatine consumption, get this, it increased creatine absorption into the brain by 47%. 47%. Now, what does extra creatine do in the brain? Creatine in the brain is everything. Our muscles in our brain are the most energy demanding parts of our body, particularly our brain for the size of it. And creatine is what gives us these like quick surges of ATP from our phosphocreatine source. So we're talking about all kinds of things related to acetylcholine, related to GABA, keeping our brain calm, keeping a neuronal signal strong, synaptic density, synaptic signaling, just everything that is required for our brain to move sharply. Now, a calm brain is a fast brain, and creatine helps actually calm the brain so that it can move swifter and faster. And sodium is actually making it so creatine gets in the body and in the brain better. It might actually help in the muscle as well. So people get concerned because creatine can make you retain water. And that is certainly a true thing. Ironically, having adequate amounts of sodium actually allow the creatine to get into the right spot. It doesn't mean you load up on a bunch of salt, but if you take your creatine with some salt, it can help you out immensely. It can help get the creatine in where it needs to go rather than staying in the extracellular space causing extra fluid. So when this happens, you're making it so that you're puffy and you're, you're not liking how you look. When you actually get the intracellular water coming in, that's going to make it so that it's going to more of a muscle pump, right? Or going into the brain. Now, here Here's an extra thing that you can do. There's some talk about carbohydrates aiding creatine absorption. That's certainly a thing, but it seems as though sodium might even be more important. But electrolyte balance in general is important. So if you take some magnesium ahead of time and allow that magnesium to absorb, that can also increase the creatine absorption. But here's where we want to get really fascinating. There's this thing called GAA. I've talked about it in other videos. Dirt cheap supplement. GAA, also known as guanidinoacetate, let's call it GAA, it's a precursor to creatine. And we're seeing more and more evidence that GAA not only supports creatine absorption and going to the proper place, but GAA as a precursor to creatine actually increases creatine stores in the brain even more than creatine alone. So when it comes to the brain, GAA restores the energetics of our brain. This means that improved memory, it improves uh, creatine stores by, I think it's 9% in the gray matter, 12% in the white matter, and over 17% in the cerebellum. And then we have the observational data to back it up. Quicker reaction time, better memory. Then when they look at like magnetic resonance spectroscopy, we see like the brain actually changes and the energetics of the brain and the creatine stores, they're changing with GAA. So what's the takeaway from this? The simple takeaway is get yourself some inexpensive GAA and take about three three grams of that. 
five grams of creatine, and about 500 milligrams of sodium. Doing this and ensuring that you're hydrated, make sure that the creatine gets to where it's going and can literally make you smarter and make your brain move better. I'll see you tomorrow.